Good morning. How's it going out there, folks? Welcome back here to a Tuesday, May 27th, 2025 is the date, 1120 a.m. local time, California time. Uh, latest activity here on the Earthquake 3D Globe shows a 3.5 earthquake here down across the uh, Java Trench portion here of the Java Trench in the green flag. Go ahead and start off here, starting off on the west coast with uh, earthquake activity here. Um, we'll start off in the Pacific Northwest here, see what's going on up in Washington. Not a whole lot out there. Washington's been uh, a little on the quiet side, even uh, if we look at the last seven days or so. Uh, look, I think at the beginning of that last seven days, we had a little bit of activity across the Seattle Fault and up around Mount Vernon. But for the most part, just general small microquake activity out there across Washington for now. Uh, really nothing major going on. Same for Oregon. Uh, Northern California looks like they're taking a little break from all that earthquake activity that's been ramping up here this morning. Well, not this morning, but uh, over the last few days this morning. 2.4 earthquake there about 5 o'clock this morning. Getting ahead of myself. Uh, I'm sure we still got trimmer activity occurring underneath this area. A real quick glance at the trimmer map. Let me show you guys here real quick. From yesterday, uh, shows about 406 epicenters of trimmer underneath this area, Northern California, Southern or Southwestern Oregon area. And that's been like that uh, for uh, about two weeks now. Our total tally here, if we look, and this doesn't include... You know, this goes back to last month, the last 30 days, but there was a few days there in the beginning of that period where there was no trimmer. Trimmer basically kicked up around the 7th of this month, and uh, well, we're well over 10,000 epicenters of uh, Cascadia trimmer out there, 11,142. Uh, the majority of it down here across the southern end, and I think that's why we've been seeing a lot of earthquake activity out here, specifically down here across that triple point boundary in the extreme southern end of the Cascadia mega thrust zone. Uh, a couple shallower earthquakes up here. Uh, this is crustal quakes, uh, indicative there of stress and strain uh, with that tremor activity that's occurring underneath this region. Uh, but that, just today, one earthquake, we'll continue to watch that though. I think we'll see maybe at least one or two more uh, throughout the day today. And we'll check on the trimmer counts a little bit later on this evening. Uh, the Bay Area, San Francisco here. A couple more earthquakes overnight uh, since last night's update. A 1.7 and a 2.0 just outside the Pacifica area. Got a little bit of swarming going on here. That is just off the San Andreas Fault. Um, you know, it's been super quiet out here recently in terms of earthquake activity. Yesterday and overnight... A little bit of uptick. Nothing big going on there, but uh, we are starting to move out there around the San Francisco region uh, and the Bay Area in general. Uh, further down south here, got uh, some twos and some smaller quakes there around the uh, creeping section of the San Andreas Fault. Getting close here to the Parkfield section, though. Um, this latest quake, a 0.7. Now, the Parkfield section of the San Andreas Fault is a... Uh, it's obviously an area that can build up some strain and uh, some momentum there for earthquake activity. Uh, if you look at the last 30 days or so, there's really not a whole lot on it at all. Um, maybe maybe this earthquake right here, a little 0.9. But anything north there, let's see what we got. That goes into the creeping section right there little bit starting to stretch here into the uh, Parkfield segment. This area uh, potentially could see uh, any t any day now a six-pointer. Uh, they see regular intervals of large earthquakes between, uh, oh, 12 and 32 years apart with an average interval of 22 years. The last one was back in 2004. So we're, you know, we're sitting at about 21 years now since our last uh, six-pointer. And they happen on regular occasion out there. But um, we'll just got to watch that. We're entering into that period right now where we could see some uh, some larger activity. And, of course, with regions down south here locked and loaded, that next six-pointer that strikes out here could potentially trigger an unzip here the San Andreas Fault. It's been, it's been, uh, been thrown around there by some scientists and geologists and whatnot that uh, this area is you know, just completely primed, even this segment up here. Uh, the last decent earthquake in this area 
uh, was the 1857 7.9 earthquake. So, uh, and that's really close here to the creep of the uh, park build segment of the San Andreas Fault. Got the um, the segment here that runs into the southern branch. So, uh, a lot of time has passed since 1857. So we got built up strain up here north, and then of course down south here where uh, we haven't seen any uh, full scale rupture in, in over 300 years. So everything's uh, about as wound up and tight as you can get out here. Uh, let's see, further down south, let's see if we got anything above 2.5. Really not seeing anything out there. There's one earthquake out in Arizona, of all places, out around, uh, outside the Grand Canyon region. 3.6. Uh, let's see what's out there. It looks like a 3.6 and a 2.3. Interesting earthquake activity. Underneath this area, about four, three to four miles or so. A uh, little uncertain on which fault systems are out here. There's a number of them that are listed here on the map, but uh, maybe on some areas that are not listed. Obviously, there should be some faults uh, within this range, it looks like, uh, with that mountain range here. But, uh, yeah, a little bit of activity stirring up there. Uh, Arizona, it looks like there was a little swarm out here in the last 30 days. Got uh, some twos, some threes, and whatnot. Um... It is, uh, it's at the southern end here of this arc that extends all the way up into Yellowstone down through Utah. And then you can pretty much follow it through Nevada and then across the area of the Garlock Fault Shear Zone. Almost always like that every single month. A lot of activity out there. And, um, yeah, just, I mean, they get some earthquake activity out there in Arizona. Not all that common, but it does happen. Uh, Yellowstone National Park. It looks like they added a couple more quakes there from over the weekend. Nothing big. There's that 2.7 that we noted last night. Looks like there was a 2.1 and a 1.3 around that same time period there across Yellowstone National Park. Now, if we go and look at the overview here, uh, you can see a couple of those earthquakes there from yesterday. 2.7 is going to be right here. Looks like there's that uh, a little bit a little bit smaller quake, although it looks somewhat the same there on the seismograph station. Uh, it was noted to be a little bit smaller quake. Um, actually, let's see here. There was a 1.3, and then about eight minutes later, a 2.7. That's interesting. They, they both look the same far as the um, the readings there no matter which one you look at it the first one looks to be the stronger one so I'm not for sure what's going on with the USGS there and their uh, their uh, reporting but I, I think they're missing a couple quakes here because that one the 2.7 there's a little bit larger a little bit similar larger quake here in this area from yesterday not included within this zone over here yes they added a couple more but i'm specifically talking about the this area and these quakes that are happening borehole purple mountain um those from yesterday today there's a couple earthquakes located over here around maple creek uh, very small very small earthquakes there there's that 1.7 i believe um this uh, there may be, there may have been some th uh, earthquake activity within this mix, but we checked it out last night, and it showed that there was some uh, thunderstorm activity that rolled through there about that time frame, and that would explain some of the noise there on the uh, seismograph stations. Uh, out across the, uh, what do we got down there in Southern California? There, a little 1.4 in the last hour, a ways away from the San Andreas Fault. For now, uh, oil fields there, Texas, still getting hit. Uh, Oklahoma as well. Really nothing new out there. The new Madrid seismic zone in the eastern portion of the country, pretty quiet as well. As uh, far as worldwide activity goes, in the last 24 hours, largest magnitude goes to a 5.3. Across this area of the Indonesia region, that's from yesterday. So far today, uh, that goes to a 4.9 just after, well, after midnight is the largest quake here for a 4.9 in the Philippines, north here of the Philippines. Got a little swarm going on there of 
Some various magnitudes. Nothing going on yet across the Nankai Trough. I've uh, been keeping an eye on this zone right here. It has not filled in yet. There's a little bit of northward migration with that swarm going on there. Heading towards uh, the um, Taiwan area. So got to watch that. It's going to eventually squeeze this area where we'll start seeing some earthquake activity soon. Uh, areas Taiwan northeastward along that plate boundary. Uh, let's see. New Zealand looks like a 3.5 coming in right now. That uh, there in the green flag, 131 kilometers deep underneath that area. Nothing big going on there for now. Uh, let's see, Alaska area, a couple smaller quakes, really nothing major. Uh, let's see here, Middle America Trench, some fours and threes out there. Looks like a typical day across the globe here as far as plate tectonics go. We're always on the move out here, folks. May not seem like it, but uh, we always are. Uh, yeah, let's see what we got here for space weather activity. Anything uh, major going on? Looks like there was a, a CME out here. Um, potentially on the far side, maybe. Look at that. Got some type of uh, filament area, maybe about ready to blast off there. I'm not for sure. Let me check the movies see what we got yeah I don't see anything that popped off here but um, there was something uh, maybe I have to go back a few hours more but there was some type of uh, eruption there it looks like with a long duration event that's normally associated with a uh, a flare and a CME but I don't think it was anywhere earth directed this may have been some type of far side event um, Kevin not mentioning it up here uh, that's some from yesterday the only thing from today is the uh, chat of a uh, chrono hole that's been a couple different chrono holes that are facing us that may amplify the um, space weather conditions here in the coming days for roar activity I was looking at it, uh, let's see, where is it at? We'll pull it up and show you guys here. It's just some high-speed solar wind stream that's flowing from the sun. Earth here in the green, sun in the yellow. There's a coronal hole with the high-speed solar wind stream. And you can see as it comes in, it uh, it's very light. And uh, may not even hit us. Uh, there's... I mean, there's one facing directly center, uh, but a lot of times these little ones, they, they don't really provide too much here. But either way, uh, there is a chrono hole, a couple different ones facing the earth, and it could spark up some auroras here over the next couple nights. Not looking like anything fancy as far as any spectacular, uh, you know, low, low, um, readings out there as far as the uh, northern tier states. It'd probably be up in Canada, Alaska area typical zones up here uh, but we'll see what happens like I say I'm really not all that uh, impressed with that uh, coronal hole as far as the flaring goes uh, we still have a number of sunspots out there that are well quite complex 4099 and 41 or uh, yeah 4100 up there fairly massive coverage area still got uh, quite a bit of complexity here within that uh, area this one the same haven't noticed any type of weakening or any type of degrading yet. Just kind of stable out there for now. Uh, but we will continue to watch these two sunspots as they rotate further into the Earth-directed view. And uh, anything that does blast off of them will be geo-effective as far as any CME activity goes. Still a 30% chance for X-flare. M-flare at 70. C-flare around 99% chance or so. Let's take a look here at the uh, close approach asteroids see if anything is new on the list I do I do like to double check these here uh, really nothing nothing of any noteworthy uh, interest out there for now everything's uh, fairly safe all right uh, let's check out the weather outlook here for today very similar to yesterday in the past couple days out here Texas portions of the south Got uh, some tornado wind 
Watch out for that hail. Texas likes to produce those DVD-sized hailstones. <laughs> Crazy. Uh, that looks like it could be in the forecast. Maybe not as big, but uh, definitely got some hail threats out there today. So just stay weather aware. Same for tomorrow. Uh, got some tornado wind and uh, a little bit of hail threats out there as well for Wednesday. Uh, in the meantime, folks, hope everyone has a uh, wonderful wonderful morning, wonderful afternoon, depending on where you're at. So we'll keep an eye here on the uh, West Coast. All is, uh, I don't want to jinx it, but all is, you know, somewhat quiet out here for now. Just be on guard. Make sure you download that MyShake early alert notification app there for your phone. It's simply called MyShake. And uh, you can find it there on your device's uh, app store. All right. I'm going to get some yard work done, I think, here. And uh, we'll see you guys out here a little bit later on this evening for the uh, Tuesday night update. Take care.